The worst thing you can do is focus on negativity. It won't spare you from the cage of death, the pain of disease, the cruelty of time, the cold shell of human nature, or the eventual loss of everything you've ever held dear. Whatever you do, don't focus on that. Hey people, it's Scion Vise here, and welcome back to Scion Light, where I take a quick look at smaller or newer games that have piqued my interest. Today I'll be taking a look at the 3D puzzler based on perspective, Super Liminal. I first heard about this game a while ago, when it was basically just a proof of concept demo called the Museum of Simulation Technology. You could pick up objects and explore some of the primary mechanics, but there really wasn't much more to it beyond that. I never actually played it myself, but I saw some videos of it online. Of course, I was hoping it would be expanded on and fleshed out into a full game, but I definitely didn't think it would take over five years to fully materialize. It finally released on the Epic Game Store on November 12th, 2019. It'll hopefully release on other platforms later, but for now that's the only way to play it. But with that out of the way, let's see how it turned out. The first game developed by the studio Pillow Castle, Superliminal has you solving various puzzles where perspective and perception are the main tools to create these solutions. A phrase that permeates the game is perception is reality, and that is meant literally and the story revolves around that as well. The game takes place in a dream world designed to be therapy for people with certain mental issues like depression or self-doubt, created by the Pierce Institute. The creator of the Institute, Dr. Pierce, will speak to you throughout the game for various reasons. I won't go too deep into the story, as while there isn't a whole lot there overall, when you get close to the end there's more to it, and it ends up being fairly open to interpretation, depending on your perspective. In terms of presentation, the game looks pretty nice. It really reminds me of the Stanley Parable and the Beginner's Guide when it comes to visuals and presentation. I guess it's partially the art style with the narration that does that, but it's fine. Nothing about it will blow your mind, but it does the job well enough. And things do get much more interesting as you get closer to the end of the game. Now it starts to get interesting when we get to the gameplay. It's a first person puzzle game and what sets it apart is its unique perspective shifting series of mechanics. While there are a few different mechanics here, the main mechanic involves you changing an object's size and location based on perspective. Like when you hold an object, it's not staying at arm's length the entire time. It's constantly changing its size and distance, but it doesn't permanently change until you stop interacting with it. For instance, if you grab a regular sized can off the floor and look down the hall with it, when you drop that can it will be much larger and much farther away than you'd think it would be. This would be so hard to explain without footage backing it up. But regardless, a concept can be incredible, but if the substance isn't there, then that concept doesn't matter. So, this is a puzzle game. How do the puzzles fare? Well, the short answer is... eh... Take this as you will, but I really hate being too negative on games like this, especially if it's a first game by a new indie studio. If there are any teams that deserve a little slack for not being fully able to realize a concept, it's these ones. Not that I won't criticize, I'm about to criticize this quite harshly, but I don't want these developers to get discouraged. There's a great concept here, and there's clearly a lot of talent behind this game. With this under their belt, they could definitely refine and expand for a future title. Anyways, here we go. If there's anything I could say about the puzzles in Superliminal, it's that they're superficial. Once you learn a concept, like resizing an object or placing a small object far away, they never really get any deeper than that. Resizing a box to make a platform to jump on in order to get to a higher area is something that you'll do multiple times throughout the game, and it never really gets any more complicated. Outside of those very basic mechanics, rather than properly exploring ideas, Superliminal is happy just using a concept once, then completely ditching it. For instance, there's one room where a door you need to travel through is on top of some Jenga blocks. In order to reach that door, you have to realize that resizing a fan will increase the power of the wind that it creates. That's a really cool idea that could be used in so many different ways, but that room is literally the only time that idea is used. The puzzles being superficial also means that you really don't have to think about them and they'll never give you that aha moment or make you feel smart. That aha moment is something that all great puzzle games thrive on. Every time I've solved a difficult puzzle in Portal or The Witness or The Talos Principle, I feel like a genius. 
like no one else could have figured that out, you know? That feeling is almost entirely missing from Superliminal, and that sucks. It shows its full hand really early on, so there's not a whole lot to surprise you with and force you to think about things differently. You're resizing cubes at the beginning of the game, and you're resizing cubes at the end. At best, what I felt was an, oh, okay, and not because I worked to find a good solution, but because the scenarios I was put into only had one solution, and they were the few that didn't involve just moving objects around. More than anything here, I see Superliminal as a stepping stone, a foundation to create a great puzzle game on. There's a lot of really good ideas here, and some of them are executed really well, but the lack of variety and substance in these puzzles really, really drags this one down. As it is, and for the price it is, $20 Canadian, I can't really recommend Superliminal for someone who's looking for a good puzzle game. You can buy both Portal games for less than that, and those will give you much more of a rewarding experience. If it drops down to 10 on a sale, then sure, I guess, but keep in mind that even with that, a full playthrough of Superliminal will take you less than two hours. <sighs> I hate being so negative here, because I can see how much potential there is for this game and this team. I hope they can use what they've learned while making this to really focus on the puzzle design in the future, because that is so, so important. And if they do that, they can definitely create something truly great. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys later.